Chapter 39 Of Devotion to the Blessed Sacrament When the priests at the altar during the Mass pronounces the sacred words of consecration, that which was bred before ceases to be bred and becomes the body of Christ. He then raises this sacred body, which is no less than Christ himself, in his hands above his head. The bell is rung, and all the faithful bow themselves down in humble adoration of their God and Savior. Under the appearance of bread is the Lord Jesus Christ, at whose very name every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, of things on the earth, and of things under the earth. And after the consecration, Jesus remains in the sacred particle, or host, as it is called, until it is consumed. In the sacred host within the tabernacle is Jesus. There he remains night and day, and as long as he is there, he is entitled to be worshipped and adored, the same as when he was raised on high during the Mass. By devotion to the Blessed Sacrament, I mean, besides Mass and Communion, adoration, love, and prayers to Jesus at other times, while he remains on our altars. As soon as we come into church, what do we see? A light burning before the altar, to indicate the presence of God in the sacrament. Not God surrounded by thunder and lightning in his majesty to judge us, but God in a humble, silent form, to love us and do us good. What an emotion of awe and veneration should fill our souls when we think that God himself is present. What love and gratitude when we think how he is present and why. The Almighty God is present, but as one of us and our best friend. Just as if we could see Jesus Christ sitting there with a most gentle and benignant countenance, calling out to us and telling us to come nearer and tell him all about our affairs and what weighs on our hearts, and what we want him to do for us. Oh, then, when we are in church, do not let us forget for a moment who is there. Do not let us be so disrespectful to the Lord as to talk or laugh, but think of him and pray to him. How dreadful is this place, said Jacob, when the Lord appeared to him. This is no other but the house of God and the gate of heaven. Genesis twenty-eight seventeen. And Moses put off the shoes from his feet when the Lord showed himself. Take off thy shoes, said a voice to him, for the place thou standest on is holy ground. Exodus 3, 5 Surely when one has once been told of the presence of Christ in the sacrament, I should think he could never, to the longest day of his life, forget himself so far as to indulge in the slightest light or unbecoming behavior. You have heard how the magnet draws to itself pieces of iron. They fly to it and stick closely to it, because there is a power in that magnet which they cannot resist. So your hearts ought to be drawn to the tabernacle where Jesus is. Oh, how I love to see the altar rail surrounded with devout men and women praying. They get as close to Jesus as they can. How lively is their faith, and how strong their devout prayers and how ardent their desires to be pleasing to him. Then is the time grace is pouring into their souls. After all, this is the great devotion of the Church. What can compare with it? You cannot be too devout to the Blessed Sacrament. When you get the opportunity, pay a visit to the Sacrament during the week. If you had a very dear friend, you would want to see that friend every day. So desire to go and see the dearest and best friend you have, every day. Go and nestle up as close as you can to that friend who can protect you from all harm and fill you with consolation. If you cannot actually make the visit to the church, make one in spirit by turning towards the place where the sacrament is kept and devoutly lifting up your soul to him. If the priest should happen at any time to open the tabernacle when you are in church, kneel at once in adoration of the Savior exposed to view. If the sacrament is brought to any house where you are, take care that everything shall be prepared beforehand, the room swept and put in order, a table with a clean white cloth, crucifix, and a lighted candle upon it. 
in all things and in all places, show that you know well the honor and respect due to your Lord and Savior. Another devotion most agreeable to God and useful to yourself is what is called spiritual communion, that is, to excite a longing desire in your heart of receiving communion and to love the Lord and pray to Him the same as if you had actually received. Many holy persons have found great comfort and help from this practice. Blessed Joanna of the Cross declared she received the same graces from her spiritual as from her actual communion. O oh, excellent method of communicating, she exclaimed, in which one does not need to make confession, nor any permission, nor the help of any, but God alone. How beautiful to be able, as often as one likes, to draw near to Jesus and receive him in spirit, with a lively faith, almost as one would at the altar itself. Many souls will find a great help in such kind of devotions.